because the way show has come in and work on that level to help present the choices. When you say, oh, it's a conscious choice to be aware or to um, embrace love or to move into self-acceptance, what do you mean a conscious choice? So it's about explaining and, and helping someone to find the choices. You can't show them what the choices are, but you can aid them in finding the choices for themselves and understanding what the concept means by making a conscious choice. And again, that takes you in. That's another key. Making a conscious choice is something, it's, it's, a, um, it's a realization that comes to you and an understanding that comes to you that creates light, awareness, knowledge, opens up the higher chakras, the mind, the third eye. And when you apply that with love and move into love as in an unconditional love energy sense, then that's when you start to embrace the three higher chakras at the same time. If you are balanced and grounded and you have the other chakras in place, then you are coming into balance and you know taking that evolutionary path or that ascension path if you will it isn't really about necessarily going forward or or upward it's it's expanding in all directions and uh, love is is in every direction love is in the quantum it's in the multidimensional it's in the vertical link it's throughout the chakras um, the unconditional love energy and one way to access it and to understand it is through our romantic relationships romantic mm -hmm. relationships is a wonderful key um, relationship with like-minded other uh, the nine speak about and um, being with others either on a one-to-one -one in a romantic relationship or in group work or one-to-one -one as in therapist client or one-to-one -one as in family members all those relationships help us to as you say, find self-acceptance and find self-understanding, self-realization, and then move into self-love and really understanding what self, self is. The nine say to me when we make that call to the higher connection to the nine, self calls self, self responds to self. It's always, right. always self, and, and that takes you into that link, vertical, horizontal, and all the other sort of quantum links in between, into that flower of life geometry that we all are expanding. All exactly. Knowing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. And you know what? When you were saying that about the conscious choice, some people, you know, when they make the choices, it doesn't have to be right away. Um, you know, let's say you're in a, a, a sort of dysfunctional relationship or in a relationship where you're not representing yourself as what you know yourself to be or who you, you want to be. Um, it, it can come across as something as simple as saying, you know, okay, something doesn't feel right here. You know, I, you know what? I don't know. I've, I don't yeah. know, should I stay in this relationship or should I not? Or even in your day to day, whatever it is, someone says something to you in the way that you react to them, whether they're a friend, a loved one, a romantic relationship or, or any, anything at all. When you have that interaction and exchange and you, you feel that within you, that like inner voice, hello, that's your inner knowing, that's your inner calling, that is self talking to self. Yeah. So if you listen to that call and you apply that, then it'll eventually move into to more expansive states of you know um, consciousness where you're actually being aware of choices, where you're like, you know what, I'm choosing to focus on the argument in our relationship. I'm choosing to focus on the fact that um, you believe this is a monogamous relationship, but it is not, you know, on my part. But I can't tell you the truth because I can't stand to face that truth within me. So you're going to suffer by believing it's something you're not. And it just turns into, you know, it can be a toxic exchange when it doesn't have to. All it has to be is a completely honest pure state of your being which is you know that self self connection or that conscious choice to just be who you are absolutely and sometimes you don't uh, understand the choices that you have made or even that you've been making choices until further down the line if you like further into your path of evolution into your life it may come a time when you look back and think that was a choice I made and was that a conscious choice did I make that co choice unconsciously and you can look back and understand the choices that you did make and where they've taken you into the various um, timelines within your life and then you come to a place right ah so if those choices have taken me down these routes and brought me to now and I have been making choices sort of uh, semi-consciously or unconsciously now I can make the choice to make conscious choices and then really take control of my timelines in the future so it isn't something that maybe comes to us in a realization sense immediately it can take time and we look back and 
This is, I think, what the nine mean when they say to understand where you're going, you need to understand the past. Look back in order to look forward. That way, you find the now. So right. Otherwise, it can be sort of secular and, and it can be that cycle. You can call it karma, you can call it reincarnation, whatever it is, but you need to reflect back to understand, you know, A, where you came from. Because if you have an idea of where you came from and where you've, you know, come from from there, you can sort of understand where you're projectiling yourself or, Absolutely. you know, where you're going from here. And then that's where it becomes a conscious choice of like, hey, no, I don't want to go down that road. And so many people say those exact words, Magenta, in relationships, whether yeah. it's with family or romantically. Um, so uh, I, I want to really, really touch on what you mentioned earlier, because I know the name probably stuck out with a few of the listeners, um, the twin flame. Now, this is an exciting thing for me when I first, you know, discovered what a twin flame was and what the energy was. I was like, oh, my God, like, have I ever had it? Will I ever have it again? Or did I was that really a twin flame? So can you sort of shed some light magenta on what is the twin flame? And also, you know, we have this connection. Everyone is familiar with a soulmate. So what is the difference between the twin flame and a soulmate? Okay. Well, I'll try my best. You know, there are so many ways to explain these this, these concepts, this terminology uh, that, Absolutely. We, that we put to our relationships. Um, so on one level, the soulmate and the twin flame, on one level, it's one and the same thing. And yet it isn't really. We can look at the different energies. Um, when I look at twin flame and look at soulmate, there is a difference in energy of that relationship. So twin flame, ultimately, um, just as we have been saying, there are levels to the twin flame um, connection, just as, there, just as there are levels to love. And um, we've also been talking about self, meeting self, and that's what the twin flame is. The ultimate twin flame is self. It is a vertical link up to the twin flame dimension, which is the higher self dimension of love. It's very much um, geometry and color, and it is a connection of loving oneself. So one can make a connection, a higher connection, and bring forward knowledge and bring forward um, a meeting of minds between the human self and the higher self and even direct communication, does that mean that there's love there? You have to, in a way, fall in love with those guides, if you like. So that's where the twin flame is. It's the heart connection. It is, I love my guides. I love the white-winged collective consciousness of nine. And I know that they love me and I feel it. And in that, I then love myself. So that is the twin flame connection ultimately. So how does that then um, move into uh, the context of a relationship. So the twin flame relationship, what I would say if I were to bring that right down into the physical, I can look at couples and think, okay, we've got a man and a woman or the twin flame relationship can be in um, same sex relationships as well. One does not have to be um, in, a, in a sort of opposite gender situation. So it can be man, man, woman, woman, or man, woman. Love knows no gender. Absolutely. It's completely genderless. So let's just say for argument's sake, we have a man and a woman. And I can look at that couple and think, there's a twin flame potential here with this couple. And what does that mean? Well, it means that they are evolving and they are awakening. They are working on self. They have great um, ideas and goals that are in line with a spiritual unfoldment across the entire planet. And yet there are still some issues to be worked out here between the couple and certainly between within themselves. So that's a twin flame potential. And yet within that couple, there is synchronicity going on. There is um, spiritual work that is being done. There is a balance between the two of them. So I would then say that could embody a soulmate relationship. Um, right. But a, a twin flame, a, a fully embodied twin flame couple, in my uh, understanding from my communication with the nine, is a man and a woman, or man, man, woman, woman, however you want to look at it, a couple who have both individually come to a place where they found that wholeness, they found that unity, and they've connected with the twin flame self within self, as in that higher link. They've made that link and opened the heart. They are steady in their spiritual work and they understand that their life is a life of service, which still includes working on um, 
self. It's not giving up self and service to others only. It's self and others as one. And that they have come to a place where they aren't going to lean on anyone else when they get into a relationship. That they don't need a relationship. They might like one. Uh, they might really, really want one. But they don't need one because they are operating as a um, independent unit. They then connect with another person who's the same, an independent unit. And that's when they come together in balance. That is a very much a twin flame couple, a twin flame relationship that is operating in a conscious twin flame capacity. Not many of those couples around. They are out there and they're doing wonderful work. We don't see them that much come to light, but they are definitely out there and coming together. And, you know, 2012 is very much a year for that kind of connection to be made. Soulmates um, is more a term that, in my understanding, with my communication with the nine, that I would use... And it's all about taking terminology and taking labels and fitting that label into the most aligned energy. And that's just my perception, really, and how I work with the nine. Other conduits, other channels, other clairvoyants right. may say something differently. But usually when you get to um, a place of telepathic expansion, you are often using similar terminology for similar energies. So soulmates, I would say, is um, a relationship where the couple are possibly there's a karmic um stuff going on there from what we would perceive as past lives so there's some some stuff to work through but it is more about working in partnership um, and it, it's often done in a balance so let's picture some weighing scales you know one part of the couple's one part of the scale the other part of the couple is the other scale whereas the twin flames are more standing in parallel they don't really swing between each other in a balance they are totally one in their own unity and they come together in this this sort of vertical balanced link soulmates more swing as in say you and i were in a relationship daniel um i would right. be say a channel um but i i'm no good with technology and you are so you would make my videos or you know you're an artist but you are no good with people and i am so i would network for you uh, or you know you need some business cards right. i don't know where to start i make the business cards for you. that's the soulmate connection swing and, swing 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 yeah and it's really working right now those couples are um, really working right now for 2012 and that is a good solid trustworthy relationship and right. one a lot of people in the spiritual movement are really looking for that twin flame but there are negatives to this as well because if you are not ready, uh, or maybe ready is um, not the best word, if you are not sort of standing in that absolute place of surrender and, and light where you don't need a relationship 